Welcome back to Lessons in Pesky Punctuation. So far, we've learned about comma usage and semicolon usage. So today, we are going to learn about the colon. And when I say colon, no, I am not talking about the thing that helps you go to the bathroom. I'm talking about the type of punctuation that looks like two periods right on top of each other. So let's take a look at how we use colons in sentences properly. As you can see here, the colon has four primary functions. Number one, to indicate that something is to follow, especially a formal series. So in other words, the colon introduces a list. Number two, to replace a comma before a long or formal direct quotation. Um, Somewhere along the line, a grammarian decided that that quote should be longer than six words. I'm going to say, don't worry so much about that. Um, really, the main thing to think about is that you need to have a complete sentence before the quote in order to be able to use a colon. Now, rules number three and four are very common uses, but they're so common and simple that we're not going to focus on them in this video. Rule number three is to separate a salutation in a business letter. That's like, dear sir. And then we'd have our colon behind it. Um, so we use those in letters. And then number four, to separate hours from minutes when representing time. So if I want to say it is 4.30 in the afternoon, the colon separates the hours from minutes. I think we've used that often enough to know that rule already. So we're just going to focus on rules number one and two in this video. So let's go back to rule number one, using colons to introduce a list. So a list is usually when we have three or more items and when we introduce a list, sometimes we do it with a complete sentence in front of it. And that's the key here. You must have a complete sentence or independent clause before your list in order to be able to use a colon. Otherwise, you leave it without punctuation. So let's look at these examples. The first one is, the class will expose you to the following topics. And here we have our, our colon. Notice this is a complete thought. We have our subject class and our verb will expose. And then you is our object that finishes the sentence to the following topics. So that is a complete thought. And so we would use a colon here. And then we have our list, politics, history, and economics. In number two, same idea, sometimes you can finish off your sentence uh, by saying these items or the following. So in this case, it says this first aid kit includes these items. If we didn't have that there, if it just said this first aid kit includes, we would not use that colon because it would just flow all together as one sentence. This first aid kit includes a flashlight, an extra set of batteries, a space blanket, gauze tape, and aspirin. However, since we've used that phrase, these items, after it, that does make it a complete thought, and we use the colon. Sometimes you can list them vertically, like you would in an outline. So here it says you have three choices, colon. That's still a complete sentence. You have three choices. Number one, buy the car. Number two, buy the ticket. Number three, save the money and take a nap. So we'd use the colon in that case as well. Rule number two with colons is to use a colon to introduce a direct quote as long as you have a complete sentence that's before it. So in this case, instead of using a comma, we'd use a colon before the quote. So in example one, it says, my teacher's remark on my final essay was very complimentary. And then notice right here before the quote, we have a colon instead of a comma. That's because this whole introduction to the quote was a complete sentence. If it wasn't, we'd still use a comma. So if instead we said, my teacher's remark on my final essay was... That's not a complete thought, and we'd use a comma here, and then we'd have our quote. But since we're using 
the phrase very complementary to complete that sentence, let me erase all my markings here, we are still going to use that colon. So number two, the minister shouted at his congregation, colon. Again, that's a complete thought. Do not worry, the next time I stand up here, I will have answers to these questions. And then number three, the largest of the aliens repeatedly insisted the following. Again, here's an instance where we're using a phrase to complete the thought so that we can use our colon. And they're saying, we come in peace, take me to your leader. All right, so on the next slide, we're going to practice inserting colons where they belong in the sentences. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on this practice, we are going to add colons to the sentences where they belong. So I apologize, there is a typo on this slide. I'm gonna cross out where it says semicolons here and make it say colons. So we are adding colons to the sentences below where they belong. Remember to add a colon before lists and quotes, but only if a complete sentence introduces them. So let's take a look at number one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna ask you to pause the video at this time and try to add the punctuation where it belongs on your own. And then when you're ready, you can replay the video to check with my key. So pause your video now. All right, let's check these answers. In number one, a formal report includes nine elements. Then notice what comes next. It is a list of all nine elements. So we need a colon right here in our sentence. All right, number two, in her research on student writing, Smythe, 2004, page 37, finds an interesting conclusion. Well, here's a quote coming after that. So we just need to ask ourselves, is this a complete sentence before the quote? So let's reread that part. In her research on student writing, Smythe finds an interesting conclusion. Well, we have our subject Smythe, our verb finds, and then we have what she finds, an interesting conclusion. So yes, that is a complete sentence, and our colon would go right here. All right, number three. She knew exactly what she wanted, banana cream pie, applesauce, and chocolate milk. Well, take a look, guys. I've got a list of things that she wants. Right before it is a complete sentence. She knew exactly what she wanted. So I need to put a colon right here in my sentence. And then lastly, number four. His grocery list included the following, rice, beans, and cookies. Notice how similar number four is to number three. We have our list of three items at the end, and at the beginning we have a complete sentence. His grocery list included the following. So just like number three, I have my colon right here in my sentence. Hopefully that made sense to you, but if not, again, please come see me for extra help or ask a peer in class to explain it to you in a different way or use your online resources. Hopefully this was helpful to you in learning how to use colons today. In our next video, we are going to be learning about using dashes, so stay tuned.